Hey, I wanted to share a cool new project I was working on, which is basically building an agent that does its own prompt engineering. It'll run its own evals, revise a prompt to try to do better at the next round of evals, and then kind of learn from itself and learn from the evals to just continue doing that kind of prompt iteration. So basically, it's going to do the job of a prompt engineer all by itself without me having to be in the loop at all. Um, but it does require me to kind of just set it up, set up the evals as if I was doing the prompt engineering myself. Um, but then the agent will kind of do all of the work in the end. So I'll go through and kind of talk through the beginning of the project, you know, some of the eval setup, you know, how do you actually just build the evals and run the evals yourself? How do you score a run like that? And then I'll probably go through how to actually kind of build the agent as well. So we'll cover all of those in different chunks. And then I'll also share the code. If you want to use any of that in GitHub, it'll be available to you. Um, but first of all, uh, the project is going to be built off of something that I shared previously, which was this kind of conversational bot over here that was extracting long-term memories from a conversation. So maybe you want to hop over there and just kind of see how that was built, or you can just skip it and hopefully pick up enough context from the conversation to figure out what's going on here. Um, but we'll start with this. And the idea is if I wanted to take this prompt here, which is what's running in the background, and actually kind of competently go to production with it, I need to make sure that it actually kind of works well. Um, so in the demo I shared previously, I just made sure it worked in about three use cases, not dozens or thousands of them. Um, if, I, if I really want to ship it, I need to feel confident in it. And I can just kind of run those tests in production if I want and improve it over time, but that means it's going to be maybe pretty bad for the first couple of users. Uh, so that's no good. So if I actually want to build this thing, if I actually want to make sure it works and like really revise the prompt and work on it, I need to go through this evaluation step no matter what. So first, let's just run through that. So again, we're having a conversation here. Let's not worry about how this operates. But when I submit this message, what's running in the background additionally is I run it through this system prompt, which its job is to kind of extract long term memories for the future. And partly, you know, it's got instructions to pull out those bits of memories. I give it a chain of thought section here about, you know, to go through this step by step. And then I say, you have these existing memories. So we've got the daughter loves dairy as an existing memory. It's got this closer and then it's got the message I'm sending. And the whole reason I kind of kicked this off in the first place is somebody noticed and commented on this closer and was like, you, you really just going to bribe the model to do this correctly. And I thought about it and I thought, yeah, that's pretty stupid. Um, you kind of hear these different prompt approaches and then maybe they work in certain models, but I don't think they necessarily always work. I just threw it in there as a quick kind of prompt to get my previous demo working, and I didn't care about if it was like effective or not. And I thought, well, now if I actually want to measure it, let's actually break this down and kind of do a real test on it. Uh, so that kind of triggered this whole thought process. Um, and my prompt is actually not in reality broken up this way, but I just kind of visually did it. And this is how I'm going to be editing the prompt is I'm going to kind of give it a chance to modify the opener, modify the instructions, modify the chain of thought, etc. Um, but here is the entire prompt. And when I run it, I need it to extract correctly that I'm a vegetarian. But I also need it to extract correctly that I eat fish and it's going to add it to this memory history. So here the conversation happened, this should be running now in the background. And hopefully, yep, we added a, a like that I eat fish and an attribute that I'm a vegetarian. So now we can see if I run the prompt again, it would have those new memories in it. And the question now is like, oh wait, I actually do eat meat. If I, if I read something like this, it's got kind of a new memory context. Uh, it's got this new message. Is it able to kind of correctly respond to this new scenario? And so it okay, got rid of the vegetarian, it changed that to a like that I eat meat. So it did kind of handle that correctly, but there's going to be a million scenarios like this. And I want to be able to test them all. And if I make one change to it, I want to make sure it didn't break everything. So the way you would kind of traditionally approach this, or I don't know if traditionally is the right, because this is like brand new, um, is I would set up a whole bunch of evals over here. And for each one of these, I kind of have a the human input, which would be the message that we're including down here. So I'm a pescatarian, so I don't eat meat, but I do eat food. I'm going to imagine some memories that I already have. So here's that I'm not a pescatarian. And when I run this, I would expect it to do an output very similar to this. So that would be kind of an eval run. It's just that that one kind of scenario. It needs to run all this information through. 
and then I need to compare the actual output from me running this to this expected output, and I'll say if they you know, are a match or not. And you can choose a lot of ways that you want to do the evaluation. So I, I run it through a second model that does a comparison. Um, and I, for the sake of my evaluations I'm setting up today, we can talk through kind of a couple of ways to do it. But I'm only saying if you are exactly like you get the category correct, you get the action update, and you get the, the bit of knowledge, is that a correct match? Um, you could kind of, you know, score it in different ways, like, oh, got knowledge right, been category right, but missed action, so it's two or two out of three or something like that, but I'm just going to go, you are correct or not correct. And I need to run through all these evals. So here's an eval with, it has a history of, I like spicy food. If I say I like spicy food, I expect nothing to come out of it. You know, if I have no memories and I say this, I expect it to create that memory. And if I've got a random memory and prefer gluten-free options, it needs to create that new one. So setting up the evals is creating a whole bunch of these scenarios and the expected outputs so that I can compare my real outputs against those. And this is something that is time to time intensive. Uh, so for this, I just synthetically kind of generated all these. So I've got a script that runs that comes up with a whole bunch of personas and for each of those kind of answers some question so that it can kind of generate some of these starting inputs. And then I kind of take those starting inputs and, and I build on it. So some of them kind of mutate similar memories. So some of them are kind of identical to that exact same thing. Some of them pull out a, a fraction of it. Some of them are just totally different or you know maybe no memories at all. And then using that input in those memories, I generate the expected output that I would want this prompt to produce. And you might run this through like a really good model to make sure that it's actually pretty accurate. And then I'm not actually showing this here, but I actually mutate this slightly and I make kind of a bad output. So I want to compare both that it does, you know, the actual output matches the expected output and is different from a wrong output. And that's just kind of to gain extra confidence that, you know, my evaluation tool just isn't kind of inaccurate and in saying everything's the same. You know, I do want to test the counter positives to make sure that we know that it's not the same. So that's kind of oops, how the evals need to be set up. So once I have this huge list, and I'm just showing kind of five here, but you're going to want tens or hundreds of these basically to be able to do a really thorough evaluation. But it is expensive to run those, so you, know, you need to be a little bit cost aware as well. But I'm going to be running through tons of those scenarios, getting the outputs from it, comparing the outputs to this expected output, taking those learnings and passing it back into the original model, which is going to now revise the prompt and then run the whole evaluation setup again. So here I've got a diagram for how this works. We've got uh, our prompt engineer here. So there's kind of some brain that just knows if we just keep looping or if we're finally done and hit some success point. But really it's just gonna kind of keep triggering a tool that writes a new prompt and it's going to look at each of these sections that we have, the you know, opener, instructions, closer, chain of thought. It's going to look at all of the learnings from our previous attempts and it's going to try to write a new prompt and that new prompt now we're going to run through this whole evaluation so it's going to run through our evaluation data set which is kind of you know going to look like a bunch of these entries passes those into the prompt that's been modified with this new kind of memory and and human conversation we're going to get the output and then we're going to run it through another model that compares the outputs you know from the result versus the expected result from those we're going to get an overall score for this evaluation we're going to find some learnings from it so we're going to extract some of the things that fail and we're going to pass that back over here to kind of begin the process again so those learnings go into the next iteration go through another eval and learn from that experience hopefully write a better prompt keep going keep going keep going and so now the agent can basically do its own prompt engineering using the information that it learned from the previous evaluations. And to just to like a little bit of extra background for this. So there are a couple of cool papers I saw. This one was about uh, reflection. This is from it's like 2023. I think like it was earlier in 2023 than that. Um, but this is using basically linguistic feedback to learn from for in to like keep improving upon. So I thought, oh, great. Just give it some of the, you know, its own information back in just kind of like, you know, human language. Hopefully let it learn from that for previous or for like subsequent trials. 
And so you don't need to kind of retrain a model or anything. You can just give it a little bit extra information and it can reflect on that. So I thought that was a pretty interesting process. Um, there's also this one about the unreasonable effectiveness of eccentric automatic prompts. And this one uh, was, was kind of testing out different openers, different closers on lots of different models. And it proved, or I think they demonstrated that different models kind of react differently to it. And certain like individual words basically can have surprisingly large impact on the outputs. So it was really important here in what I was bringing back to this was basically, you know, test a lot of different things, give it to the model, just a chance to just come up with whatever it wants. And like, maybe it'll actually kind of come up with something way better than I came up with on my own, which was just kind of a basic first pass at writing a prompt. So I thought, let's just kind of use this concept. And I took out some of their concept of breaking it up into openers, closers, um, oops, opener, closer, instructions, chain of thought. So I liked that concept of kind of like isolating different components, giving it some probably guidance about what are good instructions and good openers, and then letting it kind of run free within that uh, structure. And then here's another great one on large language models as optimizers. So basically they'll generate new solutions from the prompts that contain previously generated solutions with their values. So I'm using that uh, feedback mechanism here when I run an evaluation. It is taking it back here, passing it into this kind of previous attempt block so that the writer will use that information. So that I'm certainly going to use. And then I didn't actually pull anything, I think, out of this paper, but this was kind of cool using evolutionary algorithms as prompt optimizers. So if you give it a bunch of starting prompts, it'll kind of just like build these crossovers and mutations from a bunch of that starting prompt batch and hopefully kind of get you to a, a good end result through a natural evolutionary process. So really cool, but I didn't pull that in for this concept. This was really just, you know, straightforward, take some of the failures, break those down into little simple English statements, and then pass that back to this prompt writer. So that's the approach that I took for this model generation. And to see that like a little bit more clearly, I think I just have a step one of define the original prompt in those couple couple components, the model is going to revise that. So it's going to kind of just write updated instructions as one section of it. It's going to go through that whole evaluation process now. So we're going to build an evaluation data set that has lots of different inputs. So it's going to run those inputs through, get a bunch of outputs. And then we need to run it through another model, which compares those outputs to the expected outputs to determine if they were, you know, if it was a pass or a fail. Um, and then we're going to generate this kind of results catalog, which is getting a, an accuracy score, which we'll kind of calculate based on these passes and failures, the learnings from that run, and kind of just a, we need to note what changed so it can you know, remember what was successful or not. And that's what's going to keep getting passed back through here. So this is the loop that's going to continue over and over again. And just to see it with the actual prompt, you know, here's the starting prompt broken down into those sections. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Here's like, let's say it updated this section here. So that's the instructions have been updated. Now we uh, actually are going to pass in some eval data set. So this eval has a, a mem memory and this is the new human message that's going to be passed in as part of our eval. It generates this output and then we have to compare now in a new model that output that it spat out to our eval expected. And this is going to say, all right, these are the same. That's a positive response. So that's kind of the structure of the eval, um, the structure of how we're looping through that. This is how the graph is kind of set up with an agent and its tools. And then these arrows are coming up here because I had to populate the data set somehow. And I had to kind of verify that this, that oops, our evaluation prompt actually works. So these are some kind of extra setup steps up here. So this is a big kind of, I don't know, loop that I made up here, which is generating all of the fake data that we're going to use, or the synthetic data to, to build our eval data set. So that's going to generate the inputs, uh, generate the memories off of those inputs and for specifically each of those inputs, it's going to generate the desired response and then mutate that slightly for the bad response. And then this is the important step that I really skipped here. Uh, but a human needs to, if you're going to create a bunch of synthetic data, like really check to make sure that it is accurate. Uh, so that human should sign off on all of this test data to make sure that it's 100% accurate because this is what you're going to train your whole model on. Uh, so that is how I populated the eval data set. 
and the input really contains the human message and the um, the existing memories. And then what I want to do is also make sure that we've got this kind of evaluation where we're comparing the actual results here to the expected results, and we need to make sure that that evaluation is correct. So up here, I just need to validate the prompt. So I'm basically passing through the expected results versus the kind of like comparing one to one to the expected results and then comparing them to the bad results and making sure that all the expecteds are a match and all the bads are not a match. So you need to make sure that this is correct and you need to make sure that what you're using to verify this prompt is the model that you're using down here. Um, but interestingly, like a lot of these other models, you can use whatever you want. So you could run a lot of these locally if you want to, because this is going to be kind of an expensive process. Uh, so this prompt engineer that is just kind of the brains behind triggering the whole thing, it can be whatever you want. The prompt writer, I think should be maybe one of this, the smartest model that you use in this entire process. This for it to be able to learn from the previous attempts and write something new should be, you know, GPT-4 class. Um, and then it's good to note that when you're actually running the evals and, and outputting the results, you want to test on the exact model that you're going to use in production. Because, you know, if you're training it on 3.5 working really well, and then you switch it over to Llama at the end, um, you there's no way to predict that the model that you've trained, basically, like that prompt performs anywhere similarly to the model that you're actually going to use in production. So you have to use at this point the, the production model that you intend to use. But the eval model can be you know, whatever you want, because it's just going to do a, a separate analysis on, on the results. Uh, so this has to be the production model. This has to be probably a really smart, competent model. These two can be whatever you want, as long as this is kind of consistent with the one that you've already verified works up here. So a little bit weird. And then up here for generating all the data, you can use whatever models you want as well. Uh, so this is basically how I use AI to set up all the evals, validate that my prompt works, and once I know that this kind of loop is going to work down here, I created an agent that can now cycle through and just endlessly kind of be a prompt engineer. Uh, so this is how it works. And the end goal is to really get to a point where I would feel comfortable generating a brand new prompt that works in a whole bunch of scenarios as I have these conversations over here that generates all these kind of expected outcomes. And I, there's, you know, because I've got categories, actions, bits of knowledge, there's so many things to test that I'm going to be a lot more confident in my prompt engineering, knowing that I have all this huge eval data set to work with. Um, so that is basically, you know, an overview of, of the what is being built here. Uh, we can see, let me just pull one up. When I actually run this, I'll, I'll show you basically how the prompts work. So the first thing is it goes through this controller to make sure that it's just saying, should we run a test now? Have we hit 10 iterations, which is when we kind of want to bail just to kind of like have some fail. And you can set that to 100 or 1000, depending on what models you're using and how accurate you want it to be. Um, or if we kind of hit our accuracy threshold, so then we know that we can actually successfully uh, end the process. Um, it's going to kick off the prompt writer. So the prompt writer here this is a prompt that I'm, you're giving it, which is basically, you know, you are a prompt engineer. I'm going to give you these four parts. So there's an opener, there's instructions, there's a chain of thought section, and there's a closer. I want you to look at this whole prompt. I want you to look at also, if we had eval data, it would be in here. Look at all the evaluation and identify which part of the prompt, or sorry, first, you know, analyze all the eval result, results consider which part you think would yield the greatest improvements and then tell us what should be improved. And you'll see here, uh, I didn't bribe it. I'm proud of myself. Okay, I didn't bribe it, but I told us to take a deep breath, so I'm, I'm going easy on it. Um, so this is the part that kind of writes the new prompt and it's going to output some instructions. This is the new section, and then we're gonna start testing those. So now I reassemble this prompt with all those different components and I start running it through what is our eval data set, which is a bunch of different runs here. So this one is going to, the first one that runs is I'm a pescatarian. I don't eat meat, but I do eat seafood. And so that's going to be the message we send. It also has memories of I'm not a pescatarian. So that is going to be in here. And then its output, we're going to compare against both the desired response and kind of a, a bad response. And so this output, we're going to now see it passes to a new new chain here, 
which is asking it to compare the expected output to the actual output and giving an eval result. And the same thing, we're going to do the exact same thing with the um, bad outcomes. And so different here is good. We want them to be different in the bad ones, but we want them to be the same here on the, on the positives. And then we're going to basically loop through, do this process again with the next eval, which is, I like spicy food. Uh, so we're going to run through each of those. When it hits enough failures, it basically is going to start the process again, determine, yep, we want to go back to the prompt writer again. The prompt writer this time is going to have a little bit more information. So it's going to pass through kind of the current versions of the prompt with the what changed. And I should probably, you know, structure this a little bit better or pull some information out of here. But this has to know kind of what was modified and all the results from it. So it's got the evaluation results down here and hopefully use that information to now try something new. It's got the new instructions. And this is now going to go through that whole process again of starting off the evaluation with the I'm not a pescatarian and doing a comparison again on the knowledge modifier. And this is just going to keep repeating. We're going to keep getting kind of an accuracy score from this and bubbling that up. And then that's going to determine when we need to, you know, eventually <laughs> either keep writing this thing or, or hit a success point, hopefully. Um, and like I said, it's going to work a lot better if this prompt writer has a smart model underlying it because uh, I think I'm just using 3.5 over here to save some money and it's uh, pretty poor in its job of understanding what's going on. So it doesn't yield much better results over time. Uh, so you get what you pay for. Um, so that's basically like how the entire process works. You can see under the hood what the actual runs are going to look like and hopefully it's going to kind of keep op optimizing and getting to the point where we can ship a, ship a really competent prompt here. Um, if you want to stick around, I can run through some of the code here, uh, but I want to always, I, I guess I never really mentioned this. I'm writing most of this code basically with AI at this point, and I'm not really evaluating it and saying it's very good. So it works for this single use case, um, but I'm, you know, flying through this as fast as I can, basically, and I'm heavily leaning on AI to write a lot of these things. So cool code quality, you know, take it or leave it. Um, but I'll show you, this will be in GitHub. So we've got kind of agents, data, graphs, tools. I kind of broke it down. And then we've just got this notebook here, which basically just has some demos of what's going on. Here's the original prompt that we're actually submitting. I'm actually just gonna break it up into those couple of sections. Um, this is what we're gonna pass through into our graph as the input of here's the sections of our prompt got no messages and we're gonna like kick off this graph to basically run for a long time. You need to make sure it has a high recursion limit so it actually continues. So this is just going to kind of kick everything off. Um, if you wanna see how the data is generated, this is a kind of a really long process. Got some explainer up here about how it works, but basically we are going to output something that looks like this with the input, memories, desired response, and a bad response. Um, and it goes through a bunch of steps, it generates the input. From that input, it kind of makes some sort of believable memories from the past. And then from those inputs and existing memories, then we generate our expected output and then we mutate a bad output. So that's how we do this. Um, and it has a little bonus section that I included down here. So here's a lot of setup for it. Number of runs you wanna do. So how many do you actually wanna generate? I just did kind of 10 for this initial data set, but you could do hundreds or thousands. Um, so it goes through all those steps of here's a prompt to generate the input. So I'm kind of like having it come up with a persona and then kind of actually from that persona generate believable conversation that that's what's going to be happening and, you know, defining its response, things like that. Um, and then I'm also kind of like seeding it with a couple of different things to make sure that it's not always like answering the exact same question. So I'm just kind of setting it up to have some believable conversations. Then for each of those, uh, starter points, we generate the memories. So we've got to kind of create the tool here that generates memories. And this is basically using our initial prompt that we're actually going to evaluate to generate memories. But it's going to use, you know, you probably want to use a good model to actually generate those uh, memories and initial outputs. Maybe not for the memories, but for the initial outputs, you want to use a good model so that the, you can go back through as a human and verify it. But chances are, if you've used an expensive model to train it on, it'll, it'll be pretty good to start. 
Um, then I'm going to mutate those memories. So, you know, sometimes I want them to be like a little bit wrong so that I can test if I'm creating something or updating a memory that was incorrect. Um, generating the expected outputs and then mutating the expected outputs to become bad outputs. And I included this little extra tidbit down here. Uh, so that everything above we're going to use in our fine-tuning, or sorry, our um, prompt engineering evals. But if you want to structure it in a way to tr do a fine-tuned model, this one down here will output a different file. So our eval data set is, is JSON-L, so each one of these is a line of JSON that is kind of contains the information we're going to evaluate. But the other one, next thing you run, will... Also, JSON-L format is how you do the fine tuning, uh, but you need to kind of structure the entire conversation of the user messaging something, the assistant kind of having its message, giving it the tools that it would call. So it has the tools and then giving it kind of its, its output down here. So this is kind of restructuring a bunch of this eval data set into our fine tunable model. So you could pass this over to OpenAI and, and train a fine tuned model. Um, or sorry, fine tune a model that would do something very similar. So you could even evaluate the results of your prompt engineering versus a fine tune model and do a comparison of the two. Um, and once you have kind of a good clean data set, you could pursue either one of these options. And it's you know interesting to see which one is going to yield better results. And actually, it may be possible that this one is less expensive if you don't have to have a really long prompt. So maybe fine tuning is actually what you want to do here. Uh, so that's how you can generate the data set. So that's all under the data section. Otherwise, then we have a, we use, I use LangGraph to set up kind of how the whole loop runs. And basically the agent state, what we're going to keep track of here is keeping back track of the prompt, which is all those parts that we've discussed. It's going to keep a change log. So, you know, what changed what was the val previous value, the new value, the results from it, the decision of whether we kept it or not and how accurate it was. So we want to keep those, and that's what's going to kind of get passed through to everything else. And basically, there's just kind of a, there's a simple brain that determines if we should actually kick off a new testing and writing process. Then our tool, it only has one tool right now. So it's going to do a tool call to the prompt writer to write a new prompt. Um, and I actually have two options here. If you want to use Anthropic, you could, or you can use OpenAI. So these are both in the tools for writing a prompt. And this is what we already showed what that looks like, but how it's going to pick the part of the prompt, write a new part of the prompt here. And I tried it with Anthropic, um, and I because I wanted to try Claude 3, which had just kind of released Haiku. Uh, so I did it with Haiku, and for some reason, I just couldn't get it to return any prompts that weren't identical to the original prompts. Um, I did see maybe a day or two later that it seemed like they were having some troubles with Haiku, and people were struggling to get it to actually understand system prompts. Uh, so maybe I need to go back and look at it. Um, but the structure here is a little different because Claude uses uh, XML as opposed to JSON. So there's a little bit difference there, but if you want to try Anthropic, go for it. Where were we? We were in the graph, prompt writer graph. Uh, so it really has that one tool call, and when it finishes that tool call and gets a new prompt, it always calls the tester. And the tester basically runs through our whole eval data set bails when it hits a certain like failure threshold and then logs all that history and kicks off the process again they just kind of keep looping and so the interesting tools down here are we've got this section that actually runs the eval which goes through our file that we generated up here of the eval data set and for each of those it takes the uh, test prompt generates an output from it and then it compares that output to the expected output and the bad output condenses all of that into kind of our, I used a confusion matrix here to score the accuracy of it. Um, it bails when it hits a certain failure threshold, and then it kind of returns the accuracy confusion matrix and the inaccurate responses that we're going to use to train uh, the next, or that we're going to pass to the next prompt writing model or agent. Um, so that's how we do the generating the prompt, or the generating the prompt output, I guess, is the thing that calls just our existing prompt with our memories and our um, human message to generate it. The evaluation we showed, which is how it evaluates and compares the expected output versus the actual output. So those are all the tools. That's the graph. The agent was really just quickly determining if we should continue or not. 
so that's how the line graph is set up to run. I think the interesting part here is probably just how we created the data set initially to be able to test. And like I said, human needs to go through this and confirm because if you're training on this or you're doing prompt engineering on this, you wanna make sure that your accurate responses are 100% exactly what you expect them to be because it's going to kind of optimize for that use case. And if you put in some bad responses here, you're just gonna get other you know, terrible responses as, as an outcome. So that's how this whole thing runs. And now if we come back here and run the notebook, it's gonna kick off our agent. And so it goes to the prompt controller, determines that, yep, we need to write a prompt. Here is the uh, prompt writer. If I scroll over here, the prompt writer is gonna output instructions. So here's a previous value and the new value. Ooh, gotta scroll back. And then I'm gonna stop this because I've run this enough times. We're going to, for each one of those outputs, make this scrollable, it's gonna run through our whole eval data set. So, or not our whole, but it's going to run through each one of these lines from our eval data set here. And it's going to compare to the positive output that we expect, and it's going to compare to the negative output that we expect. Different in this case is good. We want our output to be different from the negative output, so different is, is a pass in this case, but you can see the positive one, we wanted it to match, failed for different reasons. And so this is the explanation that we're going to be uh, taking from the eval and passing back to the prompt writer. So that runs, we've got a confusion matrix that's generated down here. That means we had an accuracy of 0.5 because all of the different ones were different, but all the positives were assigned as not matches. So they've got the false negatives versus our true negatives were perfect matches. And it's going to take that information, go back over, write a new prompt, and now we've got a new closer. So it's gonna, wow, it just incremented the uh, bonus that we're gonna give it. So now we're giving it light, slightly more bonus for getting it right, and maybe a lower penalty for getting it wrong. So we'll see if that works, but it doesn't look like that was any better. So it's gonna keep iterating just like this for a long time. And there are gonna be some things that you probably wanna do because I'm kind of adding that entire um, log of eval runs every single time. So this prompt is gonna get longer and longer and longer over time. So there's probably some things to probably condense that bit of knowledge into something smaller or much smaller um, or just you know trim it in some way or I don't know there, there's got to be some different ways to do that because you want to include a bunch of that knowledge but you don't want to this is going to get expensive over time um, but this really is the brains of the thing and you want to make sure that that works and if you compare it to the salary of a prompt engineer you know maybe this is worth spending tens or hundreds or even thousands of dollars on if it truly can optimize a prompt um, so that's the code I hope that was interesting um i didn't really like fully test it i ran it for a little while and it seemed like the results were getting better but i, I can see a couple of like obvious failure points for this you know it i didn't i didn't train it really well on what good openers or instructions or chain of thought or closer like that will certainly improve it but i have a fear that it might kind of just start to like really optimize for lots of the phrases included in the data so you probably have to kind of find a way to counteract that. So it's like, you know, don't include too many examples or maybe it's fine to include lots of examples, but it could really like over-optimize for exactly the evaluation data set that you're using. And so I forget if I mentioned this earlier, but for your eval data set, you know, some chunk of it, you're gonna run through this evaluation, but you wanna preserve a set for the very end that you've like never trained on. So that once you kind of feel confident that you've trained a really good prompt, you still want to run it through that kind of like untouched virgin data um, because that will tell you um, if, if it was not trained on it basically. So now we can say, all right, this is completely fresh. It's like a brand new sample set. Let's see how it does. And you'll want to run it through that as like a final confirmation that it didn't just over optimize for the eval data set that you gave it. Um, it can handle kind of brand new data and still give you the confidence that you want. Uh, so that's a really important step here is just to kind of carve off that final that final data set. Um, anyway, I think that's probably it for now. Hope that was interesting. Let me know if you have any thoughts or if you like do experiment with this or if you can kind of improve upon it or if there's any like tools that already do this because I really just kind of wanted to 
um, get some more experience with kind of like setting up these evals and talk through the evals. So this was kind of like a fun way to approach that uh, just through an agentic experience for doing the evals. Um, but yeah, there's some stuff out there. If, if any other papers, love to hear from you. Um, but catch you next time.